welcome to another Squadcast on this lovely Monday. Um, I am Camille. Joining me is Steve and Aaron. And every week we talk geek. We talk about all the things that is in our community. And we also have friends that come onto the show. This week we welcome Victoria. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Glad to be here. It's glad to have you back um, in this pixelated world that we are in right now. <laughs> Viewers at home, we know we are we are going we're going eight bit today uh, because we're having a little issues on our Discord. So please bear with us if you find you know that it's too pixelated for you. Well, guess what? Browse the web and listen to us as you're streaming us. That's that's mm. how you do. There's so many options. There's so many options. Steve, uh, Aaron, how was your weekend? Good, good. I uh, I played a lot of Mortal Kombat, mm -hmm. uh, and that's about it. Oh, well. <laughs> no, you know what? It was, Just it was fatalities. A good weekend. Chill, chill weekend. The snow finally came in in Toronto, so that yep. was the... Uh, I mean, depending for some people, that might not have been the greatest sight to see for me. I always like a little bit of snow, as long as it's not, you know, up to the friggin' knees. Um, but yeah, it was a nice weekend. It was nice. Yeah, the weather was pretty yeah. good, but, uh, you know, my PlayStation 5 died this weekend, so... Oh, no! No! Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. I, I stopped the podcast to go deeper into this. Let's just do it. Let's do a deep what, dive. What happened? Friday night, I was playing uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, setting up this, let me tell you guys, this wicked screenshot. I was so proud of this one. Oh. I was setting it up. It was, it was going to be really good. Uh, I got distracted by a conversation I was having and everything, and probably... Two minutes, five minutes later, I look up at my TV screen and it's it's on like the source uh, image screen. And I was like, oh man, and that's really weird. Like the PlayStation Five goes to sleep super quickly. I I'm, yeah. I gotta adjust that. And so I go to my uh, uh, DualSense controller, hit the PlayStation button. It's just blinking, nothing happening. I was like, oh, okay, no, I'm a little concerned now. I go over to the PlayStation, I hold down the power button, nothing. So after uh, a quick phone call to PlayStation support, they told me, yeah, it's dead. And they I just said, it's done. <laughs> At least like, they were honest. They were 100% <laughs> honest, and I'm pretty sure that they've heard this uh, before, because he's like, yeah, it's dead. Oh uh, we got we to gotta send you a box uh, to get it repaired, essentially. So it looks like it's a two-week turnaround for me to, to get back to Miles Morales. Is there Wait, so what's the explanation as to why it even happened? There isn't one. It just can oh happen. My God. It just can happen. I am so nervous that right like now. That's cool. Yeah. I'm definitely. Right? And it's well, like already having issues. Oh, yes, boy. Victoria. So I talked about, you know, my experience mm -hmm. with the PlayStation 5. My game crashed twice on me. Uh, yep. Well, my PlayStation crashed twice, once in game, once during setup. But since then, it's crashed a couple more times. And, you know, I was talking about that loud fan noise when I'm sure. running a disc. Yeah. I'm super nervous. Like, I don't know if I should just call them now oh, to, like, no. avoid the way. But then, like, so they're not they're not sending you a new one. It's just, like, repairing it. That's repair, yeah. And I, I asked them, too. I was like, so are you going to be sending my PlayStation back, or is it going to be a refurbished one uh, as a replacement? And he said, no, it's going to be yours repaired. Um, How long does that like process take? So it takes about three to four days, um, business days, to get the box sent to you. You got to pack up your console, oh God. sends it back. It's already then, too long. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's already been one day, and I'm oh like, uh. And I'm then it's about 10 to 15 days to get it back. Okay. But oh, on the positive man. side, okay, let's look for the positive in this. If Please. it takes like three, okay, let's give it three weeks, okay? you sent, right. Did you send out the box yet? or No, it was Friday night, so I'm So, still okay, in a couple of days, or you were going to send it out. Yeah. And then hopefully you'll get it back before holiday like break. That's my hope. That's right? my hope right now. If I get so, it before holiday yeah. break, I'm happy. Yeah, I, that'd be good because you know everyone yeah. uses holiday break just to uh, game, <laughs> or they yeah. should if they're not doing yeah. that already. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'll want to jump into as that. Long as and, doesn't get that though. I know. Oh my god, Victoria, don't <laughs> put that out there. Don't put that out there. A chat is definitely feeling your hurt, Steve. They're sending you. you love. Thank um, you. And again, they're actually talking about their experiences with crashes with the PlayStation 5, which, yeah. no, I just, 
I hope that it gets sorted out. I really do. Yeah. So, so I've experienced um, in one instance where my PlayStation Five completely hard crashed. I don't know mm-hmm. if that was. I think I was talking about this on the show previously. I don't know if it was just the outlet it was plugged into or yes, not. Yes. Yes. And then I've also experienced Spider Man Remastered crashing on me. But mm. I, I feel like it was an isolated incident. I haven't had any more issues since. But what worries me is that it happened to you while playing Miles Morales. Right. Which is the main game I am playing with the PlayStation. So I'm yeah. like, I'm just, now I'm just, I'm going to have this fear in the back of my mind. For sure. And and that was the thing is like, even last week on, on the show, I was saying, you know, I've had a pretty positive experience with the console, not really running into any crashes. I had one crash, I think two days before it happened, like it hard locked, had to unplug it, plugged it back in, it was fine. Nothing besides that. And oh. then all of a sudden it died and yeah. that's all it took. So Damn. I'm not really frustrated for me because again, uh, Sony provided the console for me. So yeah. I, I can't be that upset, but at the same time, right. like I'm more frustrated for the people who, you know, bought, bought the console or, you know, like 2020 has been a really bad year and everything. So for someone oh, who's like maybe living paycheck to paycheck, saving up for this console, just being like, okay, I'm going to, you know, get this console. It's going to be good end to the year and everything. And then they, run into this problem because it's not an isolated problem either yeah. I, I know a lot of people who are having issues with their console it, it is the unfortunate for. yeah it yeah. is the unfortunate reality of a console coming out at launch and that console, like yeah. not yeah. every unit sent out is going to be 100 percent perfect exactly. and even like six months down the line that's going to be the case but it, yeah it does it still does, it does suck, suck. you know it, it does. does suck um okay i i don't <laughs> even know what to say because i'm scared like i have my i have my i'm terrified right here uh there you go and i i always leave my um okay this is bad i always leave my consoles plugged in and like kind of on because like the xbox is always on so the xbox right. when you shut it down it's technically always on you hear the fan yeah. so i got used to doing that with my playstation 4 so i really hope that this doesn't like just launch me into more crashes and then I have to send it and then I don't have it for the holiday of course yeah. world problems but I'm still hoping it doesn't happen uh but let's get back to what we're going to talk about today because Steve Dude. we need to talk about that in the next few weeks when you get your console back I want to hear about I'll those give things. everyone updates yes please sounds good uh, yes but chat today we're going to actually be talking about the video game awards and um hype and the overview of all the nominations we're going to be talking about wow their new expansions, Shadowlands, as well as Avengers DLC and new announcements, and the 007 teaser, pro- 007 project, I think it's called, right? Yeah. Yeah. The teaser. working so gonna, title. So we're going to be yeah. talking about all those things. So get your thoughts ready. Let your voice be heard in chat, as well as hit, up, hit us up on our socials at Squad State. Uh, if we glitch so much that it's like really funny and we get our real 8-bit lives to us, just <laughs> take that screenshot and then tweet it to us because then I know how I look in 8-bit. <laughs> all right, let's hop into our first discussion. Um, So the Game Awards, they happen annually, and really a Canadian, Jeff Keighley, has launched this initiative, and it's become this huge thing. Every year, it's become bigger and bigger and bigger, and now we know uh, the nominations for this year's uh, Game Awards. Now, I I, want to go over, like, certain... I'm not going to go over Game of the Year quite yet, so let's not... Okay, okay, okay into that but let's talk about just awards in general for video games it's Mm -hmm. a great way to recognize um you know the studios that work really hard people in the industry that worked hard um but the video game awards well the game awards have kind of come under scrutiny because of jeff Keighley's involvement with them and his love for sony as well as his with Hideo Kojima. Um, how do you feel the Game Awards should go going forward? Based on last year, there was a lot of um, controversy over Death Stranding and how that was kind of um, nominated for so many awards. Um, and obviously, Kojima and Keeley, they have a really tight relationship there. Yeah. How do you think they should handle the Game Awards going forward? Because we all work in the industry. We do yeah. know that you eventually do become friends with people that work at these studios sure uh i think for me like like yes you you can see the bromance between uh hideo kojima and and jeff <laughs> yeah. Keeley. it's there but at the same time like 
Listen, I don't like Death Stranding. I've made that very clear on the You're show. You're crazy. You're I've crazy. Made that- very clear yeah, but crazy. i know i know <laughs> that i'm i'm of the minority opinion there and that death stranding is a pretty well reviewed game and i mean if i if i look if i run over to metacritic real quick i think it's it's kind of close in terms of the rating to what we got for ghost of tsushima this year so i think okay. it makes sense for it to have been nominated for the amount of categories that it was it's even a higher rating on pc um but yeah i mean it is what it is. Like at the end of the day, I think what what the uh, what the video game awards need to be looked at as is like the Oscars for video games. Yeah. And, and and in that case specifically, there are a lot of people who watch the Oscars. Uh, my brother, who may be watching, is one of them who looks at like the uh, like the best picture nominees, and half of them he's like, "What the hell is this?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, and so you. and so for for some people out there, they're like, seriously, this game is not even for game of the year. But what it comes down to is the critics. It's what mm-hmm. they think. And from yeah. for the most part, with Death Stranding, the critics thought it was a really good game. And so mm-hmm. obviously, it's going to get nominated for a bunch of awards. And and I think you know, with this year, I I, I like what what nominees we got this year. I, I, I want to talk about what we got going on this year. I, I don't think there's any bias, honestly. I think no. people uh, are going a little too tinfoil hat on that. Yeah. Like, obviously, there is a relationship between Hideo Kojima. Like, they yeah. are friends. They are good friends. Um, but I don't think I don't think Jeff Keighley's nominating it for Game of the Year because he's in the game or something, you know? Yeah, but and also... are just really passionate about their games. And so when they don't see their game there, they just... Right, they right. Yeah. yeah. And the also, when you look at... Um, the nomination process. Jeff Keighley is not even exactly a part of it. It's, exactly. it's all the critics that he reaches yeah. out to, all yeah. the outlets in uh, across the world. Uh, Jeff yeah. Keighley is not making that that final call of being like Death Stranding is going to be in Game of the Year. Yeah. Death Stranding is going to be in action or whatever. <laughs> And I think the thing is, with Jeff Keighley and his role, like, maybe if this was, like, the earlier days of the Game Awards, he would be much more involved in, like, all the different aspects when it was a much right. smaller show. This is a huge show now. So um, he has a lot more to worry about, like, um, money and where he's getting money to fund this. And sponsorships. sponsorships. Yeah. Exactly. So I think he's pretty hands off. Uh, with a lot of those things. So people need to chill. <laughs> I yeah. do want to talk about the things that we enjoy about the ga- Game Awards before we hop into the specific categories. Um, one of my favorite things about the Game Awards is the orchestra. And Jeff Keighley mm. confirmed that the orchestra will be back for the show. It's awesome. How do you guys feel about that? I, I love that. I love that was it. epic. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, the, that's some of the coolest stuff that we got out of the Game Awards. I think, honestly, like, in general, the way that the Game Awards just as a show has progressed over the last, like, 10 or so years has been pretty sweet. Like, you look back in the days when it was Jeff Keighley and, and what's his name from Community? Uh, on, Joel on McHale. The, yeah, and Joel McHale. You look back at the horror days of, like, yeah. the VGAs and stuff on Spike. And you're like, man, thank God Jeff Keighley didn't just leave this industry. You know, thank God he stuck with it. And honestly, that's just that's a testament to his passion for this stuff. And like, big shout outs to him because he just stuck with it. He kept refining the show, and he wanted to make it more and more a love letter to video games, mm-hmm. and more so than that, just an appreciation to the people that make these games. You know, yeah. I was uh, I was talking to my chat the other day when I was streaming. And we were talking about the game awards, and somebody was like. Oh, I don't really care about the uh, who's going to win the awards. I just want to see the game announcements. And for right. me, I was like, listen, man, I'm a big supporter of game development and supporting developers in video games. And to have a night where we can say, hey, thank you for making games. Here's here's our way of giving back. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I for agree. Sure. And, and we've also, like, the show's grown so much. It's now a place that you go to for exclusive trailers, for games to make their first announcements mm-hmm. um, at the show. So I'm looking forward for sure. to that. For sure, um, yeah. But, of course, we're all here for the awards. So let's get to some of these nominations. Multiplayer. It's been a year where there's been so many multiplayer games. I feel like because we've all been isolated at home, we've been exploring how to play with our friends even more. Uh, so... Mm-hmm. Best multiplayer nominations are Animal Crossing New Horizons, Among Us, Call of Duty Warzone, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, and Valorant. Uh, mm. This is a really hard category. Wow. This is, I think, this game. is a three-legged, or actually, this is a four-legged race between Among Us, Call of Duty, Fall Guys, and Valorant. Like, yeah, I, have, I, have I have to say go five. With, uh, Animal Crossing. Is Animal huge. Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> I could see any of the other four winning. 
What? Uh, Are you kidding me? Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing, I genuinely think has the the smallest chance to win best multiplayer. And and I'm pretty sure Among Us will win this category. Me too. Me too. Yeah, yeah Among Us pretty tough. I, I think, yeah, Among Us would win, but these are pretty strong uh, nominations. I yeah. do want to go back with your kind of hate on um, Animal Crossing. I don't, I don't well, like Animal Crossing, but you do have to give it recognition. It's been in politics pop yep. culture For like sure. it's made headlines countless times and i feel like it's it makes it a really great contender even over valorant i would but, say but you know you know why i disagree with that because it's a game that you can still play on your own and i feel That's like the, the reason it's as big as it mm. is and got as big as it was is because a lot of people just played on their own it has a multiplayer aspect to it which is probably why it's even in this category but yeah, I don't think it's right. known for multiplayer the way that the other four games are. Like Among it's, Us is literally, yeah. it was built it's on totally community. Yeah. And it's weird that it's even nominated this year. It's a game from two years ago, but I guess, I guess I it understand. Blew up this year. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, Valorant, of course, another game, huge multiplayer, huge esports scene. Fall Guys is another one of those games that really blew up from a lot of people streaming it and playing with their friends. And then Warzone is Warzone. Like, it's the it's for me, I think even more so than Apex was the only battle yeah. royale that was even mm -hmm. close to contention with uh with Fortnite. And so that's okay. why like it's it's definitely got an opportunity to win there as well. But again, I, I still see this being among us simply because among us, like the yeah. way it blew up on streaming, yeah. just in general, the way people there's another category that's dominated in where I think it's a lock, which I'm assuming we'll get to later. If not, I'll mm -hmm. just mention it in passing. But I think I think Among Us has got this one. To I'm 100 percent right with you. Yeah. No, please. To me, go ahead. Animal Crossing just feels like a more of a personal, like individual experience. When yeah. I think Animal Crossing, I don't think playing with my friends. I think of yeah. you know having my own village and being yeah. able to control what's right. in the village and stuff. So it, I don't think it really should be in the multiplayer category. It should probably be in more of a single player category. Plus, all these other games have game modes that are specifically made just for multiplayer yes mm -hmm. and cater to multiplayer specifically right yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. you know like i think it could be art i think with the whole aspect of being able to visit another person's island like that's the multiplayer mode right. for animal crossing but you're right it is more i agree with you guys it, it's more when you think Animal Crossing, a single player experience. Um, I want to go back to something that Caboose just mentioned. He said, I don't know why Animal Crossing is even nominated because like it's an old game. So is Among Us. So like- No, I, I, I was saying active. Among Us. I was oh, Among sorry, Us. Among Us, yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah, so it's an old game. So I feel like people, like when you're looking at what games are being nominated, should it be just the games that we're playing or games that are new to the year because i feel that's, like the definition has changed now yeah. when we it look has. at award shows that's because tough. typically you, you don't even uh put those games in the, these categories unless it's like yeah. the ongoing game of the year right um, but i do think that there's a specific thing with among us where like no one even knew of among us i i mm -hmm. don't think like correct me if yeah. i'm wrong up like until this year and now you small player base it was yes. niche and now you can't go on youtube twitch any anywhere without seeing among us and yeah i think it's, like it's one because of, of that where, it deserves to be here yeah it's yeah. one of those games where you got to bend the rules a little bit because like it, it just it was nothing <laughs> before this year yeah. Yeah. To, to, to put it lightly and not to like sound disrespectful or anything but like all 10 people that were playing it two years ago were the people involved with the game and their friends <laughs> and family <laughs> And now, yeah. like, it's blown yeah. up. It's got, like, this big presence in streaming and stuff like that. And, you know, there's so many people who play it nowadays where I feel like you can't not recognize that level of achievement yeah. this yeah. year at the Game Awards. You have to yeah. give credit to the devs for being able to adapt so quickly to the yeah. massive income of players as That's well. Because yeah. they had to get more servers. They probably had a lot of network issues, I would imagine, sure. having yeah. this sudden burst of player base. So well, the I mean, they canceled a the sequel. Just to keep yeah. supporting this one. I mean, that, that's got to be. Yeah. Something. And aren't they revealing the new map at the Game Awards? At the Game Awards, at yeah. The Game Awards. That's cool. So yeah. it does definitely deserve, like, to be shouted out for their hard work. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. And I think also, like, when we talk about, like, what games is it relevant to the year of the Game Awards or, like, relevant to what we're playing? It depends on what category um i think for multiplayer it makes sense because there's always updates so the game like is refreshed sure. um constantly obviously i don't think that would make sense for like an action adventure game uh but let's get to our next category 
Hunter, so Hunter slash, I see you uh, voting for Among Us as well. Uh, so yeah, I think we're all on the same page. Among Us mm -hmm. for the win there. Next one, uh, Kabuza sh should get you really excited. Best fighting game. Uh, Grand yes. Blue Fantasy versus Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. Street Fighter Five Champion Edition, One Punch Man, A Hero Nobody Knows, Under Night or Eunice. So Under Night in Birth X Late C L R. I hate I hate Eunice <laughs> because they always are always changing according to the edition of the game. But I Caboose, I'm gonna go to you first because you're like the fighting guy. Yeah. <laughs> for games here, uh, so what do you think's gonna take it? And I feel like you're gonna say Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I have like a level of bias because. Uh, because Was that really scorpion the, in the, the back? I I didn't know. <laughs> the only fighting game I really play out of this is uh, Mortal Kombat 11, but I will say Grand Blue also has a big chance here. I know that there's a huge audience for Grand Blue, and that's a game that a lot of people gravitate towards in fighting games um i don't really know i mean street fighter 5 I, I i get why it's there but i know a lot of people especially in the street fighter 5 community are like starting to like they're like just give us street fighter 6 man we come on <laughs> you know um so I, i'm not sure if that really has the biggest chance there but i mean I, I will say just based on the fact that there are people who can like vote in themselves i know that that's not the deciding factor i know that it plays a factor but i know at the end of the day like the people who are on kind of the, the voting committee mm -hmm. are the one who kind of make the final mm -hmm. decision here so i think based on that mk11 will probably win i think what gives mk11 a big upper edge on all these other fighting games is that it has a genuine like fully cinematic story mode um and mm -hmm. even more so than yeah. that considering that's mortal kombat 11 ultimate that's being nominated here you have to factor in the story mode dlc which is something that's honestly unheard of in fighting games in fighting games you just get DLC characters. Right. That's yeah. all they add as additional content. To get a whole story expansion and to get one that's actually really good yeah. was pretty sweet. Um, so I do think Mortal Kombat 11 probably has the best chance here. But if I'm thinking of a, a close second or a game that might upset, it would be Grand Blue. Mm. Victoria, yeah. Steve, how do you guys feel? I don't have a horse um, in this race. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not a huge, no, to be honest, I, I'm not a huge fighting game uh person aside from smash uh, that's the only one that i can really keep up with mm -hmm. uh but if i had to, to go through this list and look at what each game is bringing i would probably give it to mortal Kombat 11 mm -hmm. um because you brought up a great point it's yeah. it's also including story dlc which is unprecedented yeah yeah i would probably just give it to mortal Kombat because i know it's like one of the top fighting games mm -hmm. and it's been around for a really long time and they do really good work on their graphics and all that i know it's really popular yeah, and you know, to what uh, Caboose and Steve are talking about, the format of how they evolved the cinematics, like the story of Mortal Kombat. Like when they introduced that, I think it was, was it MKX? Or um, MK9, MK9? Where they started putting a story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they did nine, the cinematic story. I think it was well, nine? Well, no, no, no. So, so Mortal Kombat has always kind of been notorious for actually wanting to care to provide. No, no, no. Where, where they have it, where you're playing through as that character, it does a switch off. Like where you have that cinematic switch off. I, I mean, MK MK Nine, you could probably give credit to that, but also yeah. like Shaolin Monks was a was a cinematic story mm -hmm. game. Um, like I said, like Nether Realm or when they were Midway, like those folks, they always cared about telling like a really cool yes. story alongside their fighting games they like it started in the generic way of just here's little lore tidbits but they just kept right. going further and further and further with it to the point where like you you could you talk to somebody who's just a diehard mortal Kombat fan and the amount of information they could give you about every <laughs> character in the world it's so cool yeah and yeah. You, you, it's they created a new equation to how you do story in a fighting game. So right. I think they should be credited for that. And honestly, the love for Street Fighter, you're right. I feel like we just need to stop. Yes, it's a legacy brand, but what really has it done this year? Like I would have yeah. wanted to see maybe Smash substitute there because I think it's a much more talked about fighting game. Uh, although that's debated if it's a fighting game or not. Sure. Um but I think it was more talked about this year than the others. All right. Best action adventure nominations include yes. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ghost of Tsushima, Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Ori and the Will of the Wisp, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and The Last of Us Part Two. Whoa. These are some heavy wow. hitters. That's really tough. It's a list. And yeah. this, really they, they're 
um, acknowledging them for the best action adventure game, combining combat with traversal and pro- uh, sorry puzzle solving. I was going to say problem solving. They solved mm. a lot of my <laughs> life problems by having me procrastinate. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so who do you think? Because I'm going to go to you, uh, Steve, first on this sure. one. Um, this is a stack. It's tough. It's, it's really tough. Uh, I mean... And I don't really always, I don't typically like these genre specific ones because I mean, action adventure game, it's so, it's so broad. Vague. Yeah, it's so, yeah, it's so vague. But uh, basing it off the description that they included here, I, I, I'm leaning towards The Last of Us Part Two because it does have that really fluid, albeit like gruesome gameplay. Um, it does have a bit of story or uh, puzzle elements to it. And just as far as, looking at like an action game based on gameplay mechanics i would say the last of us really refined it yeah last of us has a really good chance ghost tsushima has a really yeah. good chance spider-man has a really good chance yeah. assassin's creed has a, this is a tough list for Probably me to choose just one close, I would think. It, it, it is it's gonna it's gonna be very close but i mean looking at the the verbiage there combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving right. like i think if we're talking combat and traversal I truly think like it's Spider-Man sure. like way above all else. The only thing that Spider-Man lacks is puzzle solving being like at all in depth. Um, I don't know if Ghost <laughs> Tsushima has really puzzle solving that's uh, to that level either. I don't think so. I haven't played Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so I'm not sure. Last of Us Part 2 has a little bit of that. I haven't played Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, but I've heard really good things about that too. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is one that, that a lot of people talk about and praise. So yeah. this is this is one where Honestly, um, in my opinion, I wouldn't be upset if any one of these games uh-huh. won. Like, I would be completely fine and understanding if any one of these games won. I know some people are going to be upset if The Last of Us 2 wins, but uh, I would be okay if that won as well. Oh, yeah. Sorry, there's, <laughs> sorry, I was muted there. Um, I, I was... I you thought know, my was, headphones yeah, went out. Yeah, yeah, like, that was me. Like, oh, you know what? It was good that I was muted because when you were like, some people are going to be upset about The Last of Us, I, I said something that, you know, I shouldn't have said to those people, but... Okay. I'll say it again. <laughs> okay. it. Um, no, but honestly, The Last of Us Part Two, it's such a strong contender because it's... You think of, like, action sequences. It has that. Like, um, mm-hmm. quick time. It has that. Puzzles. Mm-hmm. It has. It just matches yeah. everything in that category. And we were talking about it so much this oh, yeah. year. Yes, we yeah. talked about Miles Morales. We talked about Ghost of Tsushima as well. But I feel like The Last of Us just stirred up so much controversy with the way they went about that game, um, which wasn't necessarily for the majority of fans. Um, but... It had us talking about the game a bit longer than Go to Tsushima and Marvel oh, uh, Spider-Man, right? Um, now, this also, we have to acknowledge, we have three PlayStation exclusives in this category. And I think that speaks to what we were talking about uh, last week with the PlayStation 5, about how PlayStation is known to put out these action-adventure games that... Yeah a lot of gamers look to expect and that are high quality. So either way, I I think PlayStation's going home as a winner in this category. Yeah, there's a really good chance. Even just overall, I mean, Last of Us Part Two has 10 nominations versus Ghost of Tsushima has seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, This really reminds me of, I think it was 2018, which was like God of War versus the original Marvel Mm Spider-Man. It seems like year over year, Sony just comes in swinging with these, these titles. Yeah, definitely. Um, if so, Hunter Slasher says if Fallen Order was nominated last year, I'd say that, but it's too mm. stacked of a category. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely yeah, a, a tough yeah. one. I know Agent PDX is also saying um, Fallen Order, but I, I think we have to wait and see with that one. I want to get to a category that is new to the Game Awards: Innovation in Accessibility. Yes. Now, um, this category is recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. So the nominations are Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Grounded, Hyperdot, the Last of Us Part Two and Watch Dogs Legion. How do you guys feel about this category and the nominations? Love it. Yeah, I love seeing this. Um, I, I think, yeah, putting a spotlight on devs that are making games more accessible is awesome. It's gonna, 
I yeah. hope drive more developers to be like, okay, we got to do this. We got to get in on this action. And seeing the list of them, I, I think a lot of them did really strong uh, pushes forward in terms of accessibility. But when I played The Last of Us Part Two and I started going through those uh, options to, you know, customize the gameplay experience for people, you know, who might not have like uh, 100% vision or anything, I was blown mm -hmm. away by the amount of stuff that was in that game. Uh, whether it was like increased text size or the, like the the colorblind mode, um, even just uh, in, in terms of the way the uh, the aiming system worked, like you could customize literally everything about that game um, to make it more accessible for you. So I, I gotta give it to Naughty Dog for that. They they blew me away with how much commitment they had. Yeah, I think this one is definitely a lock for uh, for the Last of Us Part Two and winning. But I also think that just to to provide this category and to showcase these games mm -hmm. and their ability to provide accessibility, like especially with the Last of Us Part Two, um, it was it, it was this category and just my understanding of how important this stuff is in games. When I saw a clip from fellow Torontonian Steve Saylor, yeah. uh, who posted his reaction to the Last of Us Part Two's uh, accessibility options, it just like. It was so eye-opening to me that like yes. how important this stuff is in video games. Um, and I and I really appreciate this being just a category in general for the video game awards because this is something that should be praised for game developers going the extra mile for a lot of people out there who want to be able to play their games but may not be able to due to their circumstances. Um, but to now have that option, to now be able to play these games through the accessibility that's provided, it's really cool. And Definitely with what you see that they with what Naughty Dog is done with the Last of Us Part Two, I think that's uh that's a lock here. Yeah, I, I agree. Like um Steve is awesome. And when he yeah. reacted to The Last of Us, um actually he actually helped work on The Last he of did, Us yeah. and oh, that's awesome. helping it become accessible. And through mm -hmm. a conversation with him, I learned that a lot of games actually bring in accessibility consultants if they do, a lot of mm -hmm. games don't, if they do, at the end of the development of games. Um, mm. So you're really cutting off a whole community of people who you could touch with your story or with your game. So it's great that now we're seeing people like Steve and other consultants that are going out there working with studios to make their games accessible. And now that those games are getting the recognition in the game uh, awards, I think it's just, it's honestly so touching and long overdue yeah. that I am super excited about it. Um, I'm looking forward I don't to where know. we go from here. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I can't speak to the nominations because I don't know all the hurdles that, um, people in sure. the community um, may face with accessibility in video games. But I do say like, I, I'm really interested. Maybe we'll have to have Steve on here to speak about his thoughts on the nominations. I, I yeah. would love to hear more about that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, before we get to game of the year, I'm going to put it out there for you guys. Is there any category that you guys want to specifically go over or that you want to comment on the categories uh, overall? I was thinking best performance. Um, yeah. I think that's that's a category that I was really that's interested it. in. Um, I mean, hold on, if I could find it here. Yeah, we yeah. Had, uh, we had Laura Bailey from The Last of Us Part Two, Ashley Johnson from The Last of Us Part Two, Najee Jeter from uh, Spider Man Miles Morales, which I'm really happy to see him on that list because I think he did a great job in that mm -hmm. game. Like I thought he was great in Spider Man PS4, but he's really, really good in Spider Man really Miles good. Morales. Uh, Daisuke Suji, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, as Jin Sakai in Ghost of Tsushima, and then Logan Cunningham as Hades in the game Hades. Um, that's a pretty good list, but I think like there's just no way Ashley Johnson doesn't win this. Like there is. Do you think no so? I, know, wow. no, I disagree. I, I was would want to say Laura Bailey. Laura Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> that's what no, I was gonna say. But, I think Laura just, Bailey's performance throughout The Last of Us. There. Don't get me wrong. Ashley Johnson does a really great mm -hmm. job, but Laura Bailey coming into a franchise um, yep. as the secondary character that you play half of the game with, she actually. And I think I might have mentioned this on the Squadcast before. Playing as Abby, um, I was actually more intrigued because her performance was yeah. so different than Ashley Johnson, something that I'm familiar with as a fan. She brought a new life to the game, um, and she just did a great job because she has she had to um, bring the strength to this character that is yeah. also vulnerable. Um, so I really enjoyed her performance of that game. I I'll say I won't be upset if Laura Bailey wins this. I think she did a great job in The Last of Us Part Two, but I think all I'd need to point to is, to not spoil it, that scene. 
from mm-hmm. the last of us part two sure uh that one scene sure. the scene of the game Laura, or sorry ashley johnson's performance during that entire scene is like incredible mm-hmm. uh like yeah. every line that she delivers is it's so real and all the emotion that a lot of people have felt from that scene whether it be negative whether it be you know genuine sadness anger frustration it's all coming through her performance and she delivers on that i feel through the entirety of the game and so like for for me it's ashley johnson i won't be upset if laura bailey wins but uh but it's probably it's probably a two-legged race between them two I would agree. And going off what you just said, um, talking about that scene, I mean, Abby, everyone hated Abby right after that. Oh, yeah. But, they did. but in part of like her performance, granted, some of it's writing as well, but a lot of it is in her performance that people came around to her by the end of it. Like, that's that's mm-hmm. such a struggle, man. Like, mm-hmm. yes. so I, I, I give it to Abby for for that. And because she stepped into a game and you know, it's brand new to the franchise. Obviously, everyone knows uh, Ellie at this point, so you kind of have something to go off of. But uh, mm-hmm. for a fresh new character, I, I was really impressed. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's fair. A lot tougher. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah I, I agree with you, Victoria. There. Uh, any other categories you guys want to just uh, quickly go over before we get to game of the year? Let's do game of the year. No. All, right. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> So game of the year is recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields, okay? So Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Mm -hmm. Animal Crossing New Horizons, and The Last of Us Part II. I I completely forgot about Final Fantasy VII (laughs) Remake. When I was reading that, I'm like, oh boy. This This is is a tough one. This is tough. Yeah. I've heard so many great things about Hades. I have not played. Can you guys give any insight in that? That's the only game I've not played. I haven't played that either. I haven't played it. I've watched it a little bit. It looks like a lot of fun. It looks Mm -hmm. like a really, really cool game. Um, I don't know if it's my game of the year, but I have seen some people say that it's their game of the year. Mm, Um, And so so maybe before the Game Awards takes place, I might want to give it a try just so I can provide my own opinion about it. Um, uh, So I'll say two things. Uh, There's a game that I want to win. And then there's a game that right. I that I want to win. Uh, <laughs> so the game that I that I want to win is The Last of Us Part Two, and I want it to win just because I want to see the internet be angry. It's just gonna be, <laughs> I just yeah. I want to collect nice. all their tears. I want them to get so. I want them to make a bunch of petitions again. Act like a bunch of idiots <laughs> yeah. like they have been for the last couple of months, just yeah. because it's hilarious to me to see how <laughs> how people there's have reacted so to this game. It. It's just so dumb. Uh, the game that I really want to win is Ghost of Tsushima. That, mm-hmm. for me, top to bottom, is the ultimate experience that I've had this year. Uh, and that was even before there was a multiplayer mode. Uh, after Ghost of Tsushima Legends came out and I tried out the multiplayer and I jumped into the raid, that for, that cemented it as my game of the year and for sure my game of that console generation. Uh, it, it's just top to bottom, an incredible game, so much fun to play. It is beautiful to look at i think there's some great performances in there and a super compelling story that a lot of people overlook because they give up on it too early it's one of these games where if you just stick with it i promise you you're going to get a story that is so interesting so compelling and Mm -hmm. it provides you some really great moral dilemmas It, it makes you get it gives you a choice of like who you want to be as this character and it also gives you an idea of what it was like back then you know being a samurai being honorable following that code was actually super important it wasn't just like this nonsensical thing no that was a way of life for those people and so to be this character that kind of strays off the beaten path and becomes this ghost it's so interesting that is my game of the year without a doubt but I would love to see Last of Us win just to see people angry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. How about yeah. you, Victoria? Um, I would probably just say um, The Last of Us 2 just because it had a really great story. They seemed to mm-hmm. tie all the mechanics together really well. I know there was like a lot of people upset about how the story went. But I think if 
you aren't like too invested in the characters from the last story and just look at the last of us two as a singular game as its own game the story is like really well written True. and it has a can a someone just clip that story. and like send it out <laughs> to all the people that are hating on the last <laughs> part that's, that's that's what they need to listen to that that right there that you took yeah. the yeah. right there with that yeah. one steve so for the game I really want to see win uh, is Animal Crossing. Stop it! No, I'm being 100 percent serious. No. Since yes, no. yes, no, no. yes, Steve. yes, no. yes. I think Animal Crossing is not a great that I game think game. is going to win, but I I personally wanted to win only because that game came out at the right time, right as the world went on lockdown, right as the world went to hell, that game came out and unified the entire video game community. I've never seen that beyond Pokemon Go. Mm. And oh, the fact that... a good point. <laughs> and the fact that it, like, The Last of Us, divisive. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, I, I would say, like, it's an accessible game to a certain extent, but I just don't think that it had, the, like, the community follow following... Uh, Animal Crossing did. And then the other games on there, I think that they are a bit niche uh, for the wider community, but I don't know a single person who can't get behind Animal Crossing on a base level. Whether or not they're into like the crafting or building up a village, you can't get over how wholesome that game is. And what it did specifically this year, I, I think needs to win, in yeah. my personal opinion. But based on, if I go in with a critical eye, I definitely could see Ghost of Tsushima winning because of yeah. what it did, mm -hmm. um, yeah. especially as a swan song for uh the playstation 4 yeah. as a console I, yeah. I think that's a great way to go out they they nailed it um two other things i just want to point out it's a really strong list this year i i think it's like a seven-way tie uh but i i find it weird that fall guys isn't there that mm. that's the one where i was I like that's strange for me anyways I, I think among us got bigger than fall guys though. yeah i would i would be surprised like uh, among us mm -hmm. well okay no you have to think about it. it's technical experience and creativity right um fall guys yes technically it's it's really good yeah. but it's it's not really well i guess it is kind of creative i just don't it's see very it creative. As, it's, it's very creative they, all their mini games seem very unique and yes they yes keep coming out with really good obstacle courses and great maps yeah, yeah. yeah. But in terms and, of like what we're talking, like in terms of what sure. everyone's talking about, I, I feel like it's not to that level. Then when you look at something like Among Us, technically that game needs work. Um, yeah. So although it's fun and creates a really great experience, does that qualify for as the Game Awards are qualifying Game of the Year? It doesn't really fall into that category for me. I, yeah, it's kind of hard because you can't compare all these games on those levels since they're so different from each other. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. This game has these many more mechanics or these many more game modes, this much more story compared to this game. It has no story, but it has all these game mechanics, game modes. Right. So it's like yeah. so hard to compare because they're so different. Mm -hmm. For sure. And the other thing I wanted to bring up, the fact that Half-Life Alex wasn't given a Game of the Year nod, I can't see a VR game in general coming in for a Game of the Year in many, many years. If that game doesn't get it, I don't know what will for VR. I think VR still has a long way to go. Yeah, yeah. that that is because a really cool VR game. Like all yeah. the gameplay that I've seen of it, it, it's one of those games. The it's the first VR game where I've watched somebody like just show gameplay of it, and I was like, oh my god! Like, right? Most yeah. most yeah. VR games, I'm like, okay, yeah, but it's probably one of those things where I have to play it to actually know like yes. how cool it is. Yeah. Um, but Half Life Alex, Half Life Alex was the first time where I saw a VR game just from gameplay, mm -hmm. and I was like. You can do that, like yeah, you, yeah. You pick up a pen and just start and like start writing. writing. Like yeah. that's so cool. Like it's it's definitely huge innovation there. But I still agree that there's just there's a lot of work to yeah. be done on VR, VR and a lot yes. a lot more to come in terms of yeah. the way that they can upgrade the tech for VR before it gets to that level. I don't know what the story is like in Half Life, Alex, and whether or not that could put it up for contention. But I know definitely in terms of innovation and gameplay, it, there there was certain there's certainly an argument there for it yeah. to have been nominated for Game of the Year. But I think I'm happy, like I'm comfortable with the games that were nominated here, oh, sure. even though I have a lack yeah, of knowledge on sure. Hades. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable with all the games that were nominated for Game of the Year. Yeah. What yeah, about you, just, Camille? Um, for me, I think the the easy answer would be The Last of Us Part Two answer um yeah. I, but i think i want to kind of push it to ghost I, I i feel like it has 
done a lot. It's from Sucker Punch. It's a game that we didn't expect from Sucker Punch. No, um, no, no. It really surprised us in terms of what it offered. I, I thought it would be like Days Gone, quite frankly, before the game came out. I was like, oh, this is going to be like, it's going to have be fun for like a week and then I'm going to forget. <laughs> it's going to be gone like Days Gone. And, you know, hey. it's so much... <laughs> It's so much more than that. And it does offer a really great experience. And, you know, The Last of Us, it, it's kind of like the same old, right? Like, we know that formula. We've seen right. it. So I feel like this should go to Ghost. But we will just have to wait and see till uh, December 10th. So everybody, make sure you tune in. I'm pretty sure we'll be talking about it uh, after uh, the outcomes on the Squadcast here. So stay tuned as well.